I am an Australian living here in Belarus. And I have to tell you something. The dating market here is really weird. It's really dysfunctional. This is somehow the forces are keeping people apart. It's really, really weird what I'm seeing here in Minsk. And I have to say, this is actually quite a global phenomenon. And I believe that the dating app Tinder and other dating apps as well have a role to play in this. Not the be all and end all, but they definitely have a key role here. And it's very easy to analyze some of their effect. Let's first look at a woman's perspective and then I'll flip it around and then we can talk about from a guy's perspective. The first thing you need to know about online dating apps is when you look at the number of active users, there's about three men to every one woman. And this is going to do some funny things to the dating market, right? And now out of that as well, don't forget that there's a good proportion of women who download the apps and they do want a boyfriend or they want to meet guys. But there's also a good proportion of women who do it just as a validation thing. And I've seen some research coming out of the States saying that around 50% of girls who download Tinder do it just for attention, just for validation and these kind of positive emotions from having men chasing after you. Which means when you look at the pool of people who are going to meet, you're looking at around six men to one woman. And of course, this is extraordinary and going to create some extraordinary situations. One more thing I want to add in here. Typically, women want to date up. Now, everyone wants to do as good as they can do, right? But women want to date up and there's strong biological impulses and forces behind this that makes them want to get the best that they can get. Whereas men, of course, men want to do well as well. But when it comes to short-term casual sex, men are much happier to date down. They're happy to take women significantly below their equivalent. Let me start with just the average woman, right? Just the middle of the road, average woman. She's literally 50% are better than her, 50% are worse. So let's call her Miss 50 for being the top 50%, right? Now, of course, it's not this simple to just rank order people, but we know that the most desirable people are the same kind of people, the least desirable are the same kind of people. So we can roughly rank order people, but again, it's more nuanced than this, but just for the exercise, uh, come with me. So let's have Miss, say, Miss 50. Now, given the mathematics behind this, we can clearly see that Miss 50 is going to be matching with a lot of Mr. 25s, Mr. 20s, and so forth. Again, because men are willing to date down for sex. They're not willing to date down so much for relationships, though. Because of this big gender imbalance, we have a big match imbalance. And Miss 50, just normal, middle of the range, decent kind of girl, she's getting so many matches. So many matches, again, with Mr. 25, Mr. 20, and she'll even probably get a few with Mr. 12, Mr. 10, Mr. 8 even, right? So she's really looking up. You think the scheme of things, she's really looking up and getting a taste of this kind of guy. Now, of course, these guys are looking down to her. They know their ranking's higher than hers, and they know the trade-off, right? The trade-off is sex, easy, fast, low investment sex, right? Low financial investment, low time investment, low emotional investment. And that's kind of what he's after. Now, again, this is not everybody, every dynamic, but this is one dynamic that is playing out. If you do have a, a Mr. 20 or somewhere like this who's willing to actually date the Miss 50, there's possibly something going on with that guy. Maybe everything isn't as it seems and maybe his apparent value isn't his real-life value and that's why he's on these dating apps in the first place. Just keep that in mind as well. So what happens to Miss 50 over time? She goes on a few dates, of course, or, or some meetings anyway. And who does she meet? Well, if she's matching with anyone from Mr. 50 to Mr. 8, well, then her natural instincts and just are obvious that she's going to go and try and date the highest ones. Right? She's going to try and meet Mr. 8, Mr. 10, Mr. 12, these kind of higher ranking guys, these guys that really have a lot of choice. She's going to meet with them. Now, of course, they only want sex from her right? for the most part. She's trying to push in something else. She's trying to force something else. But they want sex one time and then go away. See, we're done. I don't want to talk to you again. I'll get a different one next week. That's the attitude of this kind of guy. A lot of girls will realize what is happening and they'll stop trying to date this kind of guy, right? But a lot of girls don't also get what's happening. They keep kind of going for that guy. And what happens to her is that she gets very jaded. She gets very kind of fatigued and kind of, a bit bitter and angry at men because she's like, 
men only want me for sex, right? That's what she starts to think. But of course, men who are that much higher than her in the dating market, right? And it's a supply and demand, it's a dating market. These guys only want it for sex. So she gets kind of bitter, angry, jaded. But the problem is she's looking up. She's looking up to guys that have so much more choice and can match with a way, way more desirable girl uh, in real life. Now we have a whole lot of Miss 50s or something around there that are kind of withdrawing from the dating market, looking to the top there because they've had a taste of that and that's what they want. But the guys don't actually want them for any more than one hour, right? So, but now they're reluctant to go for a Mr. 30 or a Mr. 50, right? Because they've had Mr. 8 and he's a lot better. He's a lot more desirable. So, these women kind of start to withhold and stop wanting to match up with people who are actually their equal. So, of course, mathematically, if you're Mr. 10, right, and you've got the top 50 chasing after you, top 50% chasing after you, you're only going to take one of those, right? You're not going to take all of them. Women in this instance will be getting a lot of attention. So this is very good for them. They get a good feeling from it. But actually, I take that back. It's not really good for them because it's fake. It's surface. It's imaginary. It's not real, right? These men aren't real. The same man who's inboxing you, hello, 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 he's inboxing another thousand girls as well, right? So it's not as personal maybe as people might think it is, as women might think that it is. So these women feel very validated, very wanted, but the reality is, is that nothing's happening. There's no boyfriend. And as time goes on, that feeling that they're kind of entitled to that higher guy, and this comes back to that narrative of don't settle, go for the Mr. Perfect, this kind of stuff. But again, we're talking about a dating market here. If you're ranked in the 50th percentile, you can't have the guy in the top 10%. He's getting a girl in the top 10%, right? So all these girls are kind of looking up and getting nowhere and spending a lot of their 20s uh, being single. As humans, we're creatures of habit. So what we start doing a lot of, we keep doing this, right? So now it gets harder and harder for a girl to quote unquote settle. Settle has this negative kind of uh, connotation to it, but it's called reality, right? If that's your ranking, you get a guy at that ranking. Like why should a guy date down when he can date sideways at his own level just for you so you can have your perfect man? Women need to be more realistic here. And a lot do, a lot switch onto this and they understand. But a lot don't. And this is all very kind of instinctive, right? Let's flip it around. Let's look at the guys. So if you've effectively got three men to one woman, and if we say that half the women aren't really there to date, it's like six men to one woman, the bottom half of men are invisible. Like the bottom half of guys don't get a single match or a single message or single anything, nothing. They get nothing you know, as you work your way up, guys slowly get in the game, right? They can slowly get a date, da 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 da, da. And then that kind of top, I don't know, maybe top 5%, top 2%, I don't know exactly, but they just clean up. Like, they absolutely clean up. They have lots of low investment casual sex. So now you have all these guys at the bottom who just want a girlfriend. They can't get one, right? Even the middle guys are struggling on Tinder. And I've seen here in Belarus... Lots of pretty good looking foreign guys just give up on Tinder. It's like I can't get any matches. I get like one a month or something, right? So it's really, really skewed. So a lot of pretty good quality guys are missing out. But then the guys at the top, the best guys, all they do is have casual sex. New girl, new girl, new girl, new girl, new girl. Why would they ever want to settle down? So once they've had a taste of this, this frequent, easy, fast, low investment sex, they don't want to settle down either. So this just ends up to be one massive disaster of course not everyone is using tinder and probably most people don't but this kind of cultural effect that's happening on tinder filters through to the general population right so the girls who are on tinder most girls will have a bit of a turn on tinder at some stage she'll have this experience she'll take that kind of feeling back into the real world and have this kind of elevated sense of what she deserves like what her worth is um, so to speak. But of course, this is not accurate. This is a bit of a simplified analysis. I'm aware of that. But you get the point of what I'm trying to get across here. There are other dynamics happening within society, within the dating apps and so forth, of course. But this seems to be a theme that I'm seeing and it's making women get quite bitter and quite frustrated at men. And then it's making men feel quite dejected and rejected and they can't get any kind of dates or anything like this. There's something about this mass market dating thing where 
it's almost like we have too many options, right? Or th again, they're not real options, right? If to say there's a thousand girls, a thousand guys, if all those thousand guys are messaging the same thousand girls, in reality, these thousand guys will disappear pretty quickly, and the girls that are left over here won't have any choice at all, right? So the, the choice is kind of an illusion. Every girl doesn't have the same thousand guys inboxing them. Those thousand guys are inboxing thousands of girls too, right? There's a bit of an illusion, this sense of I'm being chased, I have so many options. It's not quite true. Let me know your thoughts below if you have noticed this dynamic as well. Maybe you've noticed some other dynamics. I'd love to hear what you think. And if this video becomes quite popular, I'll do some more videos on dating culture and this kind of stuff going on here in Belarus. I've been living here for quite a while now, so I know the culture quite well. and I've made lots and lots of videos about living here in Belarus. What it's like to live inside here? What are the people like? What's the culture like? If this sounds interesting to you, feel free to go through some of my existing videos and do consider subscribing if you enjoy those. If you cannot get enough of my videos, feel free to check out my Patreon page. I really go in depth here. Typically on YouTube, look, you got to keep things a little bit simple. People are going to click off somewhere if it gets too deep and meaningful. So you kind of keep things a little bit simple, a little bit surface, one idea, one video kind of stuff. On Patreon, I really dig deep. I just freestyle for like 15, 20, even 30 minutes on single topics and really deep dive. So if you enjoy that kind of stuff, then you might want to check out my Patreon page as well.